Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking revenge. We are continuing on my deep dive. I am loving this series so much, and today's going to be a good one. We are getting into the engagement. They're already engaged, but we're going to deep dive the bridesmaid dress, the Charlotte of it all, and who made who cry. Come on, we already know who it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Megan made Kate cry and we're going to talk about it because I will not have that on my watch. Guys, thanks for being here. Hank and Skank merch per your request is now available. I can't say that without laughing. It's so much fun. I put it in a faux fancy font. I love saying faux fancy um, because that's what I think of a Megan. Faux fancy, right? Pretends to be fancy. No, nothing of substance there, but anyway, it's there. Check it out. Also, check out my Patreon, patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. I do uh, recaps of Sex in the City over there, but this week, Jay and I are going to jump on mic and record a little bit of bonus content and throw it up over there where we'll be looking into more Harry and Meghan stuff. We have a fun idea so check that out, uh, patreon.com. Okay, let's get into revenge. So if you remember, all Hazmat and Megane, Hank and Skank, are reflecting on her popularity. Yep, you heard me right. She credits her popularity with being, quote, uniquely special. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Harry is also buying into this fantasy, claiming it's Diana's stardust. Don't even get me started on his continued mommy issues. Ew. Elizabeth Arden Cream. Ew. So this is less than a month post-engagement, and Megan was starting to get fearful of her family. Why is that, you ask? Because she's a horrible, horrible person. She didn't want them in the family photographs. She wanted Doria there. Nobody else. Just celebrities. How'd that work out for you? Let's see. December 2017, apparently Tom Jr. sold... Thomas Markle's address to a journalist, according to Tom Bauer. That's a lot of Toms, but you know what I'm talking about. The writer Tom Bauer alleges this. And Markle started to get besieged. He tried to call Megan for help. An old hazmat apparently got on the horn and threw a tantrum. What else is new? That seems to be the only way this guy can communicate. So he's having his little tantrum saying, don't talk to them. Don't speak to anyone. It's like, okay, dude, he's trying to tell you. Uh, he's being besieged by journalists and all you guys can do is yell at the guy. So Thomas started to note that when Harry was there on the phone, that Megan played sweet and kind. But as soon as Harry left the room, she was a different person. He calls her mean and controlling. Again, sound familiar? <laughs> We've heard this. Although now I feel like the gig is up, right? Like she doesn't even pretend to hide it anymore. She just shows her mean side and he's too stupid to notice. Thomas Markle thinks that Doria was feeding Manger. <laughs> Manger. <laughs> wow, that's good. Megan's anger and spite. So it's Thomas's belief that Doria saw an opportunity that Megan could potentially pay off her debts. Remember we talked about um, her filing bankruptcy. I believe it was, oh, how much was it? Like 57000 she was in credit card debt, something like that. And that Doria knew how to play the game and she was obeying Megan's orders. So basically she was feeding the, <laughs> the devil's horrible personality, right? And doing what she wanted. So they were using each other, it sounds like. Megan got the photo optics and look, a member of my family is here. And then also Doria was using Megan to get her debts paid. Like, sure, I'll play along. I cannot wait for the supplemental part of this book to come out to find out more about Doria and where she was. Mm -hmm. We will deep dive into that when it comes out. Okay, so remember Samantha Cohen? We talked about her. She was uh, picked by the queen to lead the team to help Megan, even though Megan claims there is no team to help her. Poor perpetual victim Megan's <laughs> word was that she was thrown to the wolves. Well, Samantha Cohen's... On, uh, she's speaking up saying she's just not sure that Megan could ditch Hollywood's hyperbole and not sure that Megan could understand the royal family's rigid protocols. Well, duh, look who her tutor, I use quotation marks around that, was Harry. That dude's in the corner eating crayons. He has no idea what's going on. All I can think of now, you guys, go with me on a journey. Arrested Development. Buster, anybody? The younger brother <laughs> that was just um, off... <laughs> yeah, that I, I that's what I think of now when I think of Harry. Oh my God, I'm realizing too, Buster also had those insane mommy issues. 
remember mother boy anybody so <laughs> he had a crush on his mom for whatever reason too and so now it seems to be harry's done the same thing Ew. oh my god also there was lots of talk of seals oh full circle i how did i not put this together harry is buster Okay, so this is the part of the story that gets juicy. Megan is emailing her staff at 5 a.m. So if you remember the reason I bring this up, Harry tried to address this and say, oh, what, my wife was emailing people too early? She's the worst, you know, downplaying it all. And in the book, Tom explains it's not that she was emailing her staff at 5 a.m. She would have a conniption fit if they weren't immediately answered back. Get a life biatch um <laughs> it's just it's wild we hear a lot about this is it melissa trubati she was megan's assistant and um would often receive the brunt of megan screaming including i wish tom had gone more into this but there was uh mention of an incident where meg instructed her assistant melissa to buy these special red blankets for a sanding sandringham shooting party well it wasn't the right kind of red so it ended up in a screaming match I'm, i mean seriously not the right kind of red how what are we doing here what's happening all right, so because Tabati had failed to buy the right kind of blanket, basically people are coming forward saying Megan exerted an attitude of entitlement and would often scream at them, literally scream at them. That sounds like a fun place to work, right? So somewhere between Toronto and Kensington, perpetual victim Megan had somehow lost her quote-unquote empathy that she loved to speak so much about. Harry's own short-tempered arrogance toward the staff was her model, so of course she thought it was okay. He's acting like an ass, so should she, right? Whoever screams the loudest gets the most attention. Ugh, disgusting. It was at that point that a palace official had to ask Harry and Megan, hey, speak to staff more understandingly. And Megan replied, it's not my job to coddle people. Ugh. Again, this is what makes me so disgusted. So they're expecting the rest of the world to coddle them. We just read that horrible fiction book spare and how they're the victims of everything. Everybody's mean to everybody. Here's all my grievances. Um, we went through that Netflix series of, oh, they're terrible to me. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> they're terrible to us. But, uh, but again, if asked to speak like a human to another human, then Megan's response is, it's not my job to coddle people. Well, guess what? It's not my job to coddle you two, Hank and Skank. So let's unleash our truth here. Get into chapter 20, aggravation. And Tom goes into how they did this tour showing Megan around the UK. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that was totally smooth behind the scenes. No diva demands there. But Jan Moore from the Daily Mail points out she was acting like she was in a future episode of The Crown. So Gina, remember Nell Thorpe Count, had her former publicist, who she'd remained friendly with Megan. Megan was getting weirder and not responding directly to her text, but she thought they were still on good terms. Gina came out for an appearance of Harry and Meghan while they were on this tour. She got she talked to palace officials and said, hey, I used to work with Meghan. And they're like, okay, cool, here, just wait here in Meghan's line. Well, you can imagine a screaming fit happened behind the scenes where Meghan said, no, 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 this will not do. I cannot see her. I can't even put my eyes on her. So the palace official came back to Gina and pulled her aside and said, Sorry, we've made a mistake. You can uh, be in Harry's line. So they move her over to Harry's line. And she's like, what? No, I used to work with Megan. Well, Megan didn't want to see her. And Gina went on record to say that Megan only surrounds herself with people who can elevate her. Megan likes to close the door on the past. Again, we've seen this. This sounds very familiar. Okay, so in early 2018, there was a decision to try to make them the Fab Four. They were being introduced as the Fab Four. And... They were doing these things, talking about philanthropic work. Well, they go into this. I remember seeing these pictures. And they talk about how Megan got a hold of the mic. <laughs> it's like letting a two-year-old on the mic, right? And decided to give her own little speech and got into platitudes. She started speaking her, quote, virtuous thoughts. 
and talks of ending injustice. Okay, you know where my brain went with this? Go go on a journey with me. So have, has anybody seen Forgetting Sarah Marshall? I love that movie with Jason Segal, Russell Brand. It's so funny. Russell Brand plays Aldous Snow and he... <laughs> He, he builds himself up as a philanthropist and writes this meaningless song, We've Got to Do Something. No actual idea of what to do. He just repeats the chorus, We've Got to Do Something. We've Got to Do Something. Before Mother Earth gets any more hurt, we've got to do something. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? It's all platitudes at this point. It's also here where she decided, Megan did, to bring up her protest to the number of scenes in Suits that required her to emerge in a towel. What? What are you doing? You're with the future queen and king here, and you're talking about, again, making it about herself. Why am I surprised? And bringing you back to Suits. Apparently, according to Harry, William and Catherine were huge fans. I'm surprised their mouths didn't, didn't just fly open and they just burst into a round of applause, right? She posed herself as a trailblazer. The fun thing that Tom Bauer brings up is that marriage will make her rich and titled, but it will not make her famous. <laughs> I love that so much. So the discomfort of the four was becoming more obvious. Megan was imagining herself as center stage rather than standing on a periphery. Harry hadn't explained to his future wife that he was a diminishing, he had a diminishing role in the royal family. And Tom Bauer speculates that he probably avoided that truth out of fear of losing Megan. It's so funny, right? How these two just seem to cling on to each other, desperate for the other one. Again, how's that working out now? I hear things aren't going so well behind the scenes. Um, I will point out that at this event, Kate's dress cost allegedly 99 pounds and Megan, 1415 Again, think about that. Kate was disappointed in Megan's treatment of her shared staff. She was getting more reports of this and was trying to put a stop to that. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, they were discussing, well, Charles was discussing his transition when the queen's reign came to an end of course this is again 2018 i believe so they were just planning for the future charles knew that he needed to strengthen his bond with william they were working on that behind the scenes and coming up with plans with what would happen when charles was king he began to give william and kate more public duties so again i'm sure that made old maggie poo super happy about that and it gave Harry more things to write about and cry on in his journal. And by journal, I mean coloring book, of course. After 21, tears. Okay, so Thomas Markle was getting even more frustrated. He was getting no word from Meghan and Harry. He just wasn't getting his invite to the wedding. Meghan would once in a while throw him something like, hmm, it must have gotten lost in the post. So then... Thomas found out that Doria was visited by a palace official or a consulate official and was given an official scroll invite to the wedding. Thomas realized Megan was full of you know what. Palace was actually surprised that Megan wasn't going to see her father and encouraged her to do so, told her you should fly into LA and discreetly be driven down to Mexico, but that would uh, not work out with her plans, right? Sounds like she had big plans to ditch pretty much anybody in her family except for her mother. And how would that work out if that happened? Meanwhile, Megan flew to LA to show her mother sketches of her wedding dress and arranged to have Oscar de la Renta make Doria's outfit. Doesn't this directly contradict what she said before? I mean, everything, but that her passport was taken when she got to the palace, right? Or when she joined the royal... What? That her passport was taken. And yet she was able to travel internationally quite a bit. Hmm, interesting. Nothing makes sense. Family was upset and went on record saying, Megan has climbed socially and left her family behind. Okay, let's get into the juicy stuff. This is the stuff that I find absolutely fascinating. It is known that the royal family does not accept freebies, especially in the way of like fashion designers, that sort of thing. Offers to Kate of free designer goods were rejected on principle. So I was Googling it just to look into it. And sure enough, it says royals do not accept free clothes. So she doesn't, 
she doesn't take gifted outfits. Middleton stylists will sometimes call on a designer to maybe loan something, but then they would be returned. They're not they're not to accept the freebies. It would look like they were playing favorites, right, with certain designers. But <laughs> don't you worry. Nothing is too low bar for Hank and Skank. Skank of Hank and Skank decided that it would be a great idea to have her people call up publicity departments for designers and labels such as Chanel, Dior, Armani, Givenchy, etc., and tell them, and this is a quote from Tom Bauer's book, that Megan would be delighted if the house were to bequeath a handbag, shoes, or an accessory to Kensington Palace in the near future. Can you believe the balls on her? My God. Can you imagine how the poor assistant that had to call was probably hiding of embarrassment under her desk? Um, but then they were told these items would be treated as goodwill gifts. So <laughs> the women on the other end at the designer you know, houses were puzzled by the, quote, Duchess discount that Megan was essentially begging for because, again, offers to Kate were rejected on principle because that is just not something that the royal family does. Don't know why I continue to be surprised, but it is so fascinating to me, the balls on this woman, to act like this, to demand these things, and then go on to cry about how mistreated she was. Okay, so it was around this time that Kate gave birth to baby Louie, th her hers and William's third baby. And Harry at this point became sixth in line. He was no longer the spare. That is a direct quote from Tom Bauer. Apparently Harry did not get this memo because again, that's what he named his book. He relied on partnerships with Megan to help reposition himself. Oof. What is that saying? Hitched yourself to the wrong horse on that one. Around this time that Megan went to inspect St. George's Chapel. I remember hearing about this. Apparently she asked the tour guide about air fresheners in the chapel. And um, yeah, that's no. Mm -mm. Uh, during this time also, Megan frequently had her dress recut. What a nightmare there. Uh, Charles and agreed to increase their wedding budget, jumped on the Google machine to see approximately what the difference was in the weddings, talking about Catherine and William versus Harry and Meghan. So get this, supposedly, allegedly, whatever, around, Harry and Meghan's wedding was expected to cost more than $45 million. That's 32 million pounds. And... Catherine and Williams cost less than uh, 10 million less than that. They ex they estimated around 35 million, which would have been 22 million pounds. Absolutely unbelievable. Harry and Meghan just spending away and and it sounds like King Charles was fine like he increased the budget to help, but again, they claim they got no help from anybody. Mhm. Mm sounds like it. Interesting thing in this part of the book is traditionally, I guess, the wedding guest list would be published. It would go public before the wedding. Well, Megan fiercely protested this. Of course she did. Because then how would it look if her dad's name wasn't on there, right? Like it was pre-planned? Mm-hmm. Also during this time that we got into Tiara Gate. So remember how poorly... Harry spoke of Angela Kelly, the Queen's personal advisor, the trusted advisor. Really rude when he talked about her. Well, she had the balls to tell them no on something. How dare she, right? <laughs> so Meghan and Harry were invited to the Queen's private dressing room area. Meghan had picked out this emerald tiara. This is the one that Eugenie ended up wearing at her wedding, which I love, by the way. I love Eugenie's dress, too. I just want to say that. That off-the-shoulder dress was really pretty. Um, but I love that she wore it. And remember, as a petty payback, that's whose wedding it was when Harold and Fraud decided to announce their pregnancy. Petty, right? Side note, as we know, Harold and Fraud decided they needed to get married first and that Eugenie's wedding ended up having to get pushed back. So the queen was really kind to Eugenie and ended up letting her wear the emerald tiara. So I say suck on that, Megan. I like to think that when Megan saw Eugenie walk down the aisle, she was pissed. 
But going back, so they were in the queen's private dressing area. Angela was over these tiaras. It was her job. That was one of her tasks is to, you know, keep up with these royal tiaras. And Angela had basically said that the emerald tiara wasn't right for Meghan. And she was offered other choices. Well, Harold decided to throw a fit. Apparently, according to the book, he got angry and rude. Angela Kelly ends up telling the queen what went down. And then Harry was summoned to a private meeting and put firmly in his place, according to the Times, who was reporting on this. And I freaking love it. I wish I could have been a fly on that wall when the queen told Harold, stop acting like an ass. Okay, so this hairdresser was flown in for Megan. And so many of you, when I brought up this hairdresser before, had the funniest comments about hairdresser. She had a hairdresser. Her hair looked awful at the wedding. And that's true. I forgot about it. I'm putting a picture up now so you can see it with the tiara. And it just, it, she looked messy. This hairdresser was flown in and Megan demanded that the tiara be brought to the stylist's room. Well, Angela Kelly is the only one that seemed to respect the queen's property and how things are done and said, no, we don't do that. We don't just drop off the queen's jewels in some random stylist room that's not a thing and allegedly harry got completely irate and this is where the what megan wants megan gets uh comment comes from and i think i made him too powerful there i think it was more like what megan wants megan gets hmm. while crossing his arms and pouting like a toddler interestingly enough it was around this time that the staff started calling harry quote the hostage <laughs> i think that's so good but now i realize no he's just as bad as she is they're each other's hostages i'm not sure but yeah no they're both awful so it's also at this time that we get to princess charlotte's dress fitting oh, don't even get me started okay so kate was fed up with megan she had heard so many reports of how Megan was treating the staff and Kate was not having it. Catherine was br bringing up the royal tradition, such as wearing stockings under your dress, tights, whatever you call them. And Megan was balking at any tradition that Catherine brought up. Also during this time, Jessica Mulroney was there. Her daughter Ivy was also to be a flower girl in the wedding. And just funny to me because it sounds like Megan and Jessica were being the wicked witches of the whatever. And, and now it's funny because Jessica Mulroney is one of the people that Megan has ghosted. So I don't feel bad about that one though. Cause Jessica seems like she sucks. Um, so the book goes into that Megan clearly favored Ivy. Ivy. Isn't that terrible? They're little girls. You don't do... Why is Megan acting like a child? Even children treat each other better than this. This is just disgusting behavior. You don't do this. What, Charlotte was four? It's ridiculous. That just shows what kind of awful person Megan is. So witnesses to this event include the Givenchy staff and people around Catherine. There was even, I think it was... Was it Kirsty Osoff, who was a friend of Camilla's, was there and goes on record discussing this, saying that Megan was just being horrible and rude. And when Kate would bring up her observations, Megan would emphatically reject them and, again, just being over the top with the rudeness. So it caused Kate to burst into tears. Hmm goes directly against what nonsense Megan and Harry are spinning toward us, right? So people have been on record to say, no, 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 no. It was Kate that burst into tears. Kate tried to be the bigger person here and make amends. So the next day she brought flowers to Megan. What happens? These are the same flowers that Megan tries to spin to say, Catherine knew she messed up, so she brought me flowers. Not the actual truth, which was Catherine was trying to clear the air between them and be nice to her, you know, future sister-in-law and brought flowers, even though she wasn't the one. She was the one that ended up tears, but she still did the classy thing and brought Megan flowers. So now uh, when Catherine took her the flowers, she brought up the way that Megan speaks to her staff is unacceptable and that she's been you know, completely rude to everybody. That's when reportedly Megan slammed the door in Catherine's face. Let that sink in. Yeah, me too. 
Can't stand them. Um, That's just terrible. She slammed the door in Catherine's face and threw the flowers in the bin. Nice person, huh? Really interested in making up and and really caring about your um, fiancé's family just as much as she cared about his friends, too, huh? Terrible people. Okay, so Megan went on to tell Oprah that the tears were hers and that uh, Kate was rude and that Kate brought flowers to apologize, even though, again, in the book it outlines why that is not the case. The complete opposite happened. I just... Like, do you think it even registers in Megan's head when she tells these tales and spins these lies like this that of what the actual truth is? Or is she such a sociopath? Do you think she believes it at this point that she she was the one wronged by all this? I'm just, is it for our benefit or do you think she actually believes it too? Let me know in the comments. Interestingly enough, it was around this time when the story got out of what a rude bitch she was that Megan started to spin the narrative and she became the victim in all of this, calling it a character assassination. Again, the balls on this woman. And it makes me love Catherine even more because (laughs) she had every right to freak out on Megan, but it sounds like in every situation she's taken the high road. And uh, I just would love to be on the fly. I'd love to be a friend of Catherine's and have her vent over tea what a horrible bitch Megan is. <laughs> so then we get into chapter 22, Humiliation, and we go into Thomas Markle feeling abandoned. And this is where I'm going to leave it because, yeah, we got so much more juice to get to. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed this episode. It's interesting to get into all these details. I hope you enjoyed it too. Leave me those comments. You know I love to read them. If you take the time to write me, I'll take the time to read them. And check out my Patreon, patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. I got more stuff coming up soon there I'm very excited about. What else? Uh, that Hank and Skank merch is up, so I'll have, a com- I'll have a link in the comments for that. And just thanks for everything. I hope you have the best day, and I can't wait to get into the next part of this book. Take care. Bye-bye.